Hello, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville by fans for fans. I'm Daniel Goodmo, one of the hosts of this show. I've got my other host here, Christopher Drives. Hey, everybody. We're back at it like usual. All right. Um, this show is brought to you by the wonderful people over there at Hockey Locker, um, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, you can reach them at 414-800-7585 or visit... HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. You'll be able to get all of your hockey needs, including your skate sharpened. You can get referee gear, and you can also get NHL jerseys from all the Midwest teams. They also do jersey customizations. They'll give you great customer service. If you go into the store or call them, uh, tell them that from Milwaukee and Nashville sent you. Don't know who we are. Clearly, their logos on our own page here. Yep, but we wouldn't do that for no reason. Exactly. All right, um, so today, um, the Admirals went wolf hunting and, and nailed, Barbecue wolf anybody? nailed a six spot. Yep, six to three, Admiral victory. We ran out of tags after six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're still in first. For all, the for, for all of you hunters, that you'll get the joke. For all of you not, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hang your head in shame. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, stats of the game were? All right. Uh, shots on goal in the first period were 14-4 uh, in favor of Milwaukee. And in, in the second period, shots on goal were 10-9 in favor of Milwaukee. Hey, they actually outshot us in the third period, 10-9. Uh, we outshot them for the game, 33-23. All right, I'm about to give you guys a stat that might blow your minds. The Admirals were 5 for 6 on the power play. That's, with, with 27 penalty minutes. Yeah. And only we had 27. And only 8 infractions. Uh, Chicago was 2 for 6 on the power play for a total of 17 penalty minutes on 7 infractions. Yeah. So they were 2 for 6 on... On, on as far as us goes, um, what? Um, one thing we should talk about a little bit is the Colin Blackwell ten minute misconduct. Uh, for, we can get to that after we do our typical rundown, because yeah, we should probably discuss that in case people are wondering how that came out came about. All right, so scoring first in the game was Curtis McKenzie scoring his fourth of the the year with an assist from Paul Cotter. His second, and yes, I made enough jokes at the game about it. You people all know me if you sit by me. Right, 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 right. Just keep but, it going, keep it going. Um, then scoring on the power play was Kyle Blackwell with his fourth with an assist from Matt Donovan and Ellie Tolvanen. Uh, Donovan seventh, Tolvanen starts, then uh, Tolvanen third, then again on the power play was Ellie Tolvanen with an assist from Matt Donovan and Yakov Trenin. Donovan's eighth, Trenin's Fifth, and that was Tolvin in second goal of the year again. Then Daniel Carr scored his sixth of the year, his fifth in the last five game. That was also on the power play. Was an assist from Reb Pitlick, his sixth, and Alexander Carrier, his eighth. Then Reb Pitlick scored his first <laughs> professional <laughs> goal. Was an assist from uh, Cole Schneider and Daniel Carr. Snyder's fifth, Carr's sixth. And that was his first professional goal. So stick taps, kid, go get that puck. Um, yeah, that was uh, Pitlick. That was also a power play. Milwaukee had four consecutive power play goals. Believe that, people. All right. He didn't believe, by the way, Chris didn't believe me when I said that all four goals scored in the first period were on the power play. I could have sworn it was just like the first three. <laughs> I lost track. You were doing so well on the power play. I was all shocked. right, then scoring in the second was the lone wolf, lone wolf Dylan Coughlin. He's, that was his third. That was his third with an assist from Zach Whitecloud and Ben Jones. Then Daniel Carr struck again. Uh, White Cloud, that was his second assist, and Ben Jones, that was his second assist. Um, Daniel, that was a power play for them as well. Daniel Carr scored his second goal of the game with an assist from Cole Schneider and Frederick Allard. This line of Cole Schneider, Daniel now Carr. Schneider's sixth and Allard's fifth. Um, uh, one thing I did want to talk about a little bit. This line of Cole Schneider, Daniel Carr, and Tommy Novak is tearing up the AHL. 
They have 17 points in the last three games. Ouch. I can believe it. When you give line coach, or last, sorry, last line four coach games. Like that, it's bound to happen when you start meshing really well together. Well, speaking of that line, we have Tommy Novak scoring his second goal of the year with assist from Frederick Allard, his sixth, and Matt Donovan, his ninth. Then Dylan Coglin got his third with an assist from that Jimmy. Was his fourth, second of the game. Or his fourth on the power. Oh, by the way, Tommy Novak's goal was on the power play. Dylan Coglin scored on the power power play. His fourth. Jimmy Schultz got his third, and Gage Quinney got his seventh assist. Oh, uh, Dylan Coglin, both of his goals tonight were on the power play. Um, the one thing is, I did warn you guys about Gage Quinney. Um. Yeah, Quinny, he's like a Gage Quinny's one of our uh, top five point getters. Yes, as well as Curtis McKenzie. Yes. Um, so I did warn you about those two. Those both ended up, well, obviously they amassed for all their goals. Yeah, pretty much. Um, three stars of the game were Matt Donovan with three assists, Rem Pitlick with a goal and an assist, and Daniel Carr with two goals and an assist. In net for the Admirals was Connor Ingram. He stopped 20 and 23. Um, and Garrett Sparks started the game with 10 saves on 14 shots. And then Oscar Dance stopped 17 of 19. The Admirals peppered the net. Um, I want to thank all 2,371 uh, people that uh, bared out the weather. I know that the roads are slushy and that they're not exactly the greatest. So thank you to the people and families that brought their kids to uh, Sesame Street night. Yeah, I wish I would have known, because I would have been like Oscar the Grouch. Or Cookie Monster, one of the two. All right, referees in the game were Jake Jackson and Connor O'Donnell. Uh, linesmen were Jonathan Sedlak and William Hancock. Uh, coach for the Wolves, As, Rocky Thompson was the head coach. Yes, he is also a former Wolves player. Uh, assistant coach is Chris Dennis, and uh, other assistant coach is Bob Nardella. Uh, obviously, head coach for Milwaukee is Carl Taylor. Head coach for, or assistant coach, for, head coach Scott Ford. Now that's a funny comment. And assistant coach uh, Greg Rollo. Yes. Um, this year the Admirals seem to be doing well. Um, the only guys that were a minus for the Admirals were Jeremy Davies and Stephen Santini. Oh, but what's the Admirals' record against the Wolves this year? Out of curiosity. Two, one, zero, oh, and one. Is that a good thing? Yes, we are two, zero, oh, one, and one. Hey, are we still playing for that one thing against these guys? I'm not sure if that's a thing anymore. Because it's been a long time since I've heard anybody bring up the whole Amtrak rivalry trophy. The last time I saw it, it was in our arena. And then the next year, because of the Wolves won. And that's the last I saw it. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe they started that rivalry with Rockford now. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Well, well in that case, wouldn't it be on display in our arena? No, because it would be, it's technically Amtrak, and Amtrak sponsors the Wolves and the Admirals. Mm. But Amtrak could say, hey, um, we want to try against a different team since you keep beating this team, and now we're beating the team, and yeah. Maybe we should look into it, see if that's still a thing. Um, well, I'll look into it. In the last five, the Admirals are 5-0. and oh. Yep, five-game winning streak. In the last five games for Chicago now, I know you guys probably, for the Admirals fans, don't really care. But for the Wolves fans that watch, the Admir uh, the Wolves are 4-1. and one, Or 1-4, oh, or and four, I'm sorry. 1-4. and four. They, yeah. they got smoked this weekend by Rockford and Manitoba. Yeah, I think the Wolves are on a bit of a downslide. Um... Uh, Uh, is there anything else as far as this game is concerned? I was looking... Oh, you were going to break down uh, the whole game misconduct, correct? Yes, the great misconduct for Colin Blackwell. As much as I don't like it, I understand it. Yakov Trenin was hit in the head. And, yeah, that was a bad hit. And uh, obviously guys are going to take exception to that. Oh, yeah, you got to stick up for your teammate, don't you? Um, whether you win or lose the fight, it was about honor it for was your team. without honor. 
<laughs> it was about playing for playing with your teammates and playing for your teammates, and they obviously understand what trending means to the team. So, um, well, what was the whole point of him getting a misconduct? Like, what's the um, so basically the misconduct happened because he was secondary in the altercation. Oh. Because Trennan should have got up and fight it, fought him. Which I was kind of expecting him to, but he did get a pretty bad hit. So what's the point of hit? You know, he was still down. Obviously, the guys are going to take exception to one of our top players getting hurt. Yeah, true to it, true to it. So, um, also, with this, the Admirals are now solely in first place, not only as far as the league goes, but we also lead the Central Division in power play. That's a that's a statement I don't think either of us had anticipated coming into this season, given how poorly they played on the power play last year. We also lead the 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 the, the AHL in shots per uh, or goals per shots. So. Basically, what they're saying is, is we take less shots and score more goals. So our goals per shot ratio also leads the AH, uh, AHL Central Division. Um, and up, before I do our, uh, before I do the preview of Lavelle, do you want to talk about that one other stick tap thingy we have? Yeah, to let's do? get that out of the way. Up next, we are going to talk about one thing before we get into our. Obviously, what we are going to have on Friday, our next game. But right now, let's talk about this. AHL Player of the Week, Daniel Carr. Um, what are his stats? That way people know um, why the, he is Player of the Week. In the last three games, he uh, he played three games before tonight. Yeah. Um, in those three games, he had three goals, three assists, two game-winning goals. So, Obviously, add the two goals tonight. He's looking at making a run at it two weeks in a row. So, stick tabs, Daniel Carr. Defending league MVP. Yep, he is the uh, Les Cunningham uh, award winning award winner. Uh, that is the league MVP. For the AHL. For the AHL. So, uh, we'll see how he does. And as some people have said, you can be a great player in the NHL and never make it to the... Once you get to the NHL, you're like, oh. Yeah, you get starstruck because you, start you start playing guys like uh, like uh, Ovechkin and Crosby and Malkin and uh, Goudreau. That's uh, Johnny Goudreau, not Freddy. You start playing guys like uh, PK and Pekka Rene and uh, Nikita Kucherov. And, well, you get the message. Yeah, the talent's way different. Not only that, well, like I said, you just get starstruck because you're playing up against guys, such elite players. It just blows your mind. Like, oh crap, I'm on the same level as these guys. You just get like star. You get starstruck. The other part of it is too. I know I'd probably be shaking in my skates if I was on the same ice as Alex Ovechkin, knowing what I know about the guy. Yeah, I'd be shaking. But he's the, a great player. I'm a huge the, fan of Ovechkin. You know this. The other thing I was going to say is the two leagues are very different um, because the if you, we've been to an NHL game now, you can even say that that game was a lot faster paced than what yeah, we've seen. Yeah, you see the more crisp, uh, less errors. So Everything was more strategic, I noticed. Like defensively, the NHL game is way more crisp and uh, less sloppy than it is. Um, but what yeah, it's more strategy in the NHL game. Um, I do have, uh, we do have a preview coming up. Of the Lavelle Rockets. Uh, the Admirals beat when, Daniel? Uh, I don't know what I mean. October 12th and the Admirals home opener. Um, scoring in that game was Yakov Treden. Yeah, the Admirals won 4-2, by the way. <laughs> yes, scoring in that game was Yakov Treden for the Admirals. Josh Wilkins, he scored his first goal of, of his pro career in that game. Um, Cole Schneider and uh, Yakov tried it again. Um, scoring for Laval was Josh Brooks and Nikita Joslepov. <laughs> Jos right, how would uh, Laval do tonight before I go into my end of the preview? All right, Laval played our opponent after Laval, the Bellevue Senators. Um, Laval lost in overtime. Uh... 
to Alex Formington, who's one of the top prospects in Ottawa's organization, uh, as a guy who plays NHL 19, I always go for him when I'm in a rebuild because he's a good prospect to build a team around. So um, Ottawa looks bright as far as what their AHL looks like. They're just not NHL ready yet. Hey, uh, what's their record in the uh, last 10 games? Coming into it, because that is also your part of the preview. Before I start doing, um, it, I was about to get into something. Uh, in net for them tonight was Caden Primo. He stopped a uh, twenty at twenty five. Their other goalie is Charlie Charlie Lingren. Lingren. Uh, so let me get into <laughs> their last ten here. Their last ten. Oh, they're in third place currently. Um, their last. Oops, that's not it. That's power play. <laughs> I'm working on stat standings here. I was looking at the power play stats. Uh, technical issues. Can we ever have one show about them? All right, they are currently in first place, but they've played 16 games. So uh, they played more games than anyone in their conference, and they're only a point ahead. Yeah, but uh, what are they? What's their uh, record? Six two and two. Okay. They're six two and two. Um, I don't know if that's counting. Yeah, that's counting tonight. They're six two and two coming in. Uh, counting tonight. Um, they lost in overtime. That's their second straight loss in overtime. Uh, me? Yep. All right. Uh. Their uh, top five point getters will be uh, Alex Belzil or Belzil. Uh, Sixteen games played, six goals, five assists. Uh, they've got Charles Hudden. Uh, Sixteen games played, eight goals, two assists. Then Lucas Vadimo. Vadimo, right? Valdimo. Huh? Valdimo. Oh, Valdimo. Uh, 16 games played, 4 goals, 6 assists. And then Otto Leskinen, uh, 16 games played, he only has 8 assists. And then Xavier uh, Olet? Or is that Xavier Olet? Olet, yeah, he played for Grand Rapids last year. Well, anyways, in 16 games this year, he has 2 goals and 4 assists. Talk about Ryan Poling, who's their first round pick. Uh, Ryan Poling, 14 games played, 3 goals, 2 assists. All right, in the last 5 games, uh, let's see here. Uh, Belzeal got 2 goals. Yeah, 2 goals in his last 5. And then, uh, that. This well... While we're waiting on him, I'll cover the goalies. Uh, Charles, uh, Charles Hardy. Hey, don't cut me off, fool. We got time to kill. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, last five games for this guy. He got five goals. Yeah, he has five goals. That's Charles Hudden. Who should be in the NHL. Should, but ain't. Uh, then Lucas Vegdemo. Vadimo. That's why you're good at pronouncing her names. He only has one goal and five assists. And that's pretty much the three you should actually look out for. Like, they're top five. So, I mean... I don't know. I'm thinking we have a taste to beat them, but who knows? All right. So, guys, do you figure our winning streak can't last forever, even though we could hope, but I doubt it's going to last forever. All right. So, up for them, um, it is a toss up for who's in net because it is pretty. It, they both started eight games, um, which is a total of. 16, okay. So they have eight games each. Um, Caden Primo started the last game. He has a 2.10 goals against average. He is 5-2-1. He has the same percentage of 0.928. He 
He also has... He does not have a shutout. Um, and then we have Charles Lindgren. He has played eight games as well. He has a 4-3-1 and one record with a 2.58 goals against average and a point eight. Eight nine seven same percentage. He also has one shutout. He is perfect in the shootout. Um, Caden Primo, not so much. He has a point eight three three save percentage in the shootout. Um, other than that, we don't really have much. I will check the transactions to see if there was any movement. But well, other than that, it's basically who you got to look out for. I'm hoping we could beat him because I want this winning streak to last forever. But don't be surprised if this five-game run we're on comes to an end. And then after that, we got Belleville. The Senators, our first look at them. Yes, and they will be back here uh, shortly, actually. Yeah. All right, but that has been that. Upcoming for the Admirals, the next home game is November 23rd. So in 10 days, folks. Um, and that is our Hockey Fights Cancer Night. Yet again, I will say this again. Please watch our video. Please comment the loved ones that either you fight for or have fought for. We will try to put their name up on our green screen during our show um, to honor them. Uh, whether they so were... what is this? Uh, the 15th, that'll be Friday or Saturday? Saturday. So Saturday and Sunday, we get back-to-back -back games against Lavelle and Belleville. And then we play on the 19th against Iowa. Yes. So we have to be Iowa because we're currently uh, battling them for the top spot. And then we play uh, the um, on the flip side, Iowa is off till Saturday, part of the five-day mandatory that the AHL gives once a month. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that five-game rule. Or that five-day rule. Yeah, it's basically, it's, you ever heard of the old Do we have ours already? Uh, we had ours for this month, yes. Okay. Remember the old phrase, take your wounded and heal them, and then come back to fight? Yeah. Um, I will let you heal your wounded and yeah, yeah, give me yeah, what yeah, I, I want. You don't got to go down the hole. Right? Yeah, that's, that's basically the whole thing. It gives guys a time to heal their injuries so that the league is as competitive as it can be. Yeah, so hopefully we can keep this rolling. Cause we have oh, a couple by the way, we forgot to mention this. But for those of you that were at the game, go get your free Frosty with a purchase. Go buy you a nice little uh, small size Frosty for your loved one, and you get one free. Also, can we please get a sellout crowd at the arena? Is it so much to ask for, guys? We didn't even get a sellout for the opening night. Opening night, it was empty. Come on, guys. Let's get some butts and seats, people. Well, only Support your team. The only downside to opening night was also Bucks opening night at the same time. Yeah, I suppose. That we can't our we can't like battle with the, the NBA. I'm sorry. As, as much, much as I want to, we can. Yeah, as much as we want to battle with the NBA, we can. But anyways, yeah, uh, um, affordable tickets. Uh, tell them that me and Daniel sent you. Ask for Ryan McCampbell, my ticket rep. And then Dan, what's yours? Uh, Brian Martins, uh, go uh, go ask him, go uh, call and ask for him, and tell him Daniel sent you. Yeah, they know who we are. Um, also, if you come out on Saturday, the first four thousand fans get hockey fights cancer shirts. Um, <coughs> also, oh, yeah, that's the hockey fights cancer game, which is nice also Saturday. um for the since we won on Wednesday, we have another winning Wednesday. Yeah. Um. If you're at tonight's game, you could bring it in and get a ticket for the next Wednesday home game. As well as, since it's the game before uh -huh. Thanksgiving, they are doing a hunger task force food drive. Um, so they please bring your non-perishable food items, and you will get a buy one get one Admirals ticket offer, and you will get a raffle <laughs> to, that you can turn in to uh, located in section two twenty eight. Are outside of two se section two twenty eight at the fan service desk, yep. and um, you'll be giving to a good cause. I do it every year. Chris does it every year. Um, yeah, it's a good cause. Why also, not? bring your kids that night. Wisconsin, the the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin is giving away a hundred t shirts, or uh, not hundred, a thousand t shirts to the first thousand kids through the door. Yeah. 
So there's some more good. So there you go. You could uh, give to a needy cause. You could see some great hockey. It's a family-friendly atmosphere. Actually, you could give to two great causes. Hockey fights cancer and help feed the hum- homeless and hungry. Yeah. Um, or you the less fortunate. Hockey. And you can watch hockey, and you get free shirts out of both games for and either like the kids or the family friendly atmosphere. There's stuff for everybody to do. Just don't sit in my section. <laughs> Actually, sit in my section. I don't care. Sit in my over. section. I'm in section 330. There's a lot of seats available. All righty. Um, but there's not a bad seat in the place. I've sat almost everywhere. I not re- me. I've only sat in a few areas in that arena. I know we got to get a game where we're sitting upstairs. I think we'll have to do that on one of the school day games. Yeah, I don't even. I don't even want to go to the school day game. <laughs> All right. Um. Outside of that, those are your uh, promos left for November. We'll uh, do a December rundown about Thanksgiving. Yep. Um. We will be doing a show on Thanksgiving. Uh. Basically, in the system kind of thing, and yeah. a happy Thanksgiving video for us. Yeah. So we got some Thanksgiving stuff coming for you guys. Oh, and don't mind us if we are on camera stuffing our face with turkey. Oh, it's turkey day, people. <laughs> also, uh, we are still deciding which uh, radio network we want to tinker with as far as internet radio. We will be having an internet radio show. This oh. show will go on internet radio. We just don't know what format yet. Also, um, add in, um, during the weekdays, we will be doing this show without us on camera due to all of the work that we oh, have to do. Oh, you mean weeknights? Or yeah. weekends, we'll be doing videos. Yes. Actual videos. Yes, we will be back on camera on the weekends because it takes a lot for us to actually get the green screen up and rolling and, and all the lighting right. It takes about 20 minutes once we get done with the game. And if uh, Chris has school or I have something going on in the morning, we don't have time for all of that. Yeah. Um. So... Um, this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, <laughs> as Chris still points. <laughs> hey, shout out to do your commercial. All right, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Get all your hockey needs and figure skating needs or anything revolving around skating on ice. Yep. Um, also, uh, don't forget to comment down below about who you're battling for, who who, who you st- fight with or fight for. Who you fight for, dude. Who you fight for against Hockey Fights Cancer. Um, thank you uh, for watching our show. And go to HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com, and if you call them, tell them that we sent you. They know who we are. All right. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your uh, week. And we'll be we will back s- at it on Friday. We will see you guys Friday. Or Saturday. Whatever. Friday. Yeah. See ya.